So we're sitting here with my friend Bruce Springsteen. We just grew to trust each other. I felt really at home around you. Renegades, Born in the USA, a new Spotify original podcast from Higher Ground. Listen free only on Spotify. Stick it to cheat day. Yeah. With flavor that fuels. Two new flavors from Rain Total Body Fuel. He shoots, he scores! Cherry Limeade, Wild Cherry with a burst of lime, and White Gummy Bear, Tangy Tart Pineapple Goodness, 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, electrolytes, BCAAs, and CoQ10. Sweet without the cheat. Take that, sugar. Try new Rain Cherry Limeade and White Gummy Bear. A total body fuel times two. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 403. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. So before we hop into our article for today, I have something that I need to get off of my chest. What is wrong with people who go to the grocery store and do not return the carts? Are these people... Is there something like in their DNA that makes them not want to return these carts after they use them? You have people who leave them in the middle of the road. You have people who leave them right next to parking spots so they roll into people's cars. I mean, is it really that much more of a challenge to just put your groceries in your car and then put the cart back? How about a few less hamburgers or cheeseburgers and a few more trips to the gym. Maybe you won't be so lazy then. What in the hell is wrong with people? When I was at the store earlier today, I I swear to you, I must have seen five people in the one trip just leave their carts wherever they want. One dude just let his cart roll and it smashed into this lady's car. Dude acts like it's no big deal, hops in his car, just drives away, you know. I guess we're living in Mad Max as it is. So I guess there's no rules anymore and people just do whatever they want because that's certainly the way it seems. People just walking out of stores with groceries and shit, not paying for them. I don't even know what to say anymore, but boy, oh boy, the whole entire cart situation, it agitates me to no end. Just put your cart back after you're done with it. Just like when you were a kid and you played with your toys. What did your parents tell you? Put them back where they belong or you can't play with them anymore. You got these adults who obviously never learned that rule and think it's cool to just leave their carts wherever they want to leave them. Now I got to drive through an obstacle course. I got to worry about a cart smashing into my car while I'm inside shopping. I mean, come on. And we're not, we're talking about grown ass adults here. Just lazy people. Lazy people in general. And these are the people we're relying on to wear masks and wash their hands and not sneeze and cough on people? I can't tell you the countless amount of people I have seen walk directly out of a public restroom during this pandemic without washing their hands. So, look, I don't even have words to explain to you how aggravating it is when I see people leave their carts in the parking lot like that. And I am, I'm just fired up after witnessing what I just saw at the store a little bit ago. So I figured I'd come here and let rip real quick. And wonder, does that bother any of you out there? Is the cart situation something that you see where you live as well? People just not giving a damn, leaving the carts wherever they want? Because I know it's a serious problem just about everywhere I go in Las Vegas. It's it's to the point where I park so far away from the entrance to wherever I'm going so that my car doesn't get smashed by a cart. And and it, I, I, there's a decent chance I come out and it's still in, you know, my car is still intact completely. So I just park all the way at the end of the parking lots now and make the hike in. So any of you folks deal with that? Like wild uh, uh, people that are crazy with these carts, just leave them everywhere, let them roll into other people, have no common sense and no decency? Let me know. Shoot me a message uh, in email or on Twitter and let me know what you folks think about that because, man, I can't believe how people are just, they're just, there's no courtesy left anymore. 
it's just like everybody's like F you all the time, it seems like. This is wild to me. I can't wait to move out of the city. I guess the moral of that story is I cannot wait to move out of a, the, the a metro area and into the sticks because humanity in general is terrifying these days, folks. Absolutely terrifying. And the story we're going to talk about tonight, the article we're going to talk about tonight, is filled with people who are terrifying, okay? Filled with people who have been plastered in the headlines about the scumbaggery they're involved with and the people they're involved with. Oh, there hasn't been enough of it, but I think that that tide is going to turn now. Now that people see that the election is over, there's no uh, fear of Trump winning a re-election now. Hopefully the media will focus a little bit more on Bill Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, Hillary Clinton, and their relationship with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. We have a new report out from Chris Spargo over at OK Magazine. Make sure you give him a follow, a like, send him an email, whatever. He's done a great job uh, on this story. He's done a, a very, very good job, and he's provided a lot of context. And Chris Spargo has this new article out, and it's talking about how the Clinton Foundation, uh, the Clinton, uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, they funded Tara Mar. Ghislaine Maxwell's, um, her nonprofit. They were donors to the nonprofit. And not only that, it, again, it wasn't before the allegations were known. It was after. People knew already what was going on. People understood that Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein were rolling deep. It was like Dre and Snoop Dogg. I mean, are you kidding me right now? These people were tight and everybody knew it. But yet the Clintons were still in bed, quote unquote, with Ghislaine Maxwell. The Clintons were still funding her, donating to her, still inviting her to events. Hell, she was even at Chelsea's wedding. Oh, well, she was the plus one. I don't care. She was there. That's the problem. The fact that she was at Chelsea weddings, I mean, Chelsea uh, Clinton's wedding should be enough to light an absolute bombshell off in this case. But it hasn't. And again, I I wonder why. Why hasn't Bill Clinton been given the same exact treatment that everybody else in this case has been given? Seems like the, the mainstream media has given him a pass. It seems like the legacy media just does not have the stones it takes to go after Bill Clinton. Now, I hope that it had to do with the election and they just didn't want to give any fodder to the other side. And now that that's over and done with, I really hope that the legacy media dives in and and uses their vast amount of resources to expose the relationship between Bill Clinton and Jeffrey Epstein. Because obviously, up until this point, mum's the word. This should be plastered everywhere, this kind of stuff, but it's not. So it's important to recognize people like Chris Spargo for doing a good job and making sure that this information gets out there. And it's not like he's just writing an article without any receipts. He has the court documentation once again on Scribd here to prove it. So let's jump into this article from OK Magazine and uh, let's see what Chris Spargo has uncovered. Headline? Revealed at last, Bill and Hillary Clinton funded accused child molester Ghislaine Maxwell's charity, despite connections to pedophile, meaning Jeffrey Epstein. This article was authored by Chris Spargo. Ghislaine Maxwell received critical funding for the charity she launched in in 2012 from the Clinton Foundation, suggests newly unsealed documents. OK has obtained a protective order filed in August 2016 in which Maxwell and her attorney argued some aspects of her finances should be off limits, including how much money the Terra Mar project might have got from Bill and Hillary Clinton as an example. Well, isn't that funny? 
Isn't that funny? Because according to Gerald Lefcourt, who was one of Jeffrey Epstein's attorneys, Jeffrey Epstein was one of the first donors to the Clinton Foundation. So, the money machine keeps on churning, doesn't it? Money in, money out, turn and burn. It's all a shell game. These people are all involved with it. And every single one of these people that we discuss, in my opinion, is involved with financial crimes that would make someone like Bernie Madoff blush. Why would the Clintons be funding Ghislaine Maxwell's Terra Mar project? Considering all of the allegations hanging over Ghislaine Maxwell's head. I'll tell you why, because they don't care. They don't care about these survivors. They don't care about this case. And they certainly, certainly do not care that Ghislaine Maxwell has been alleged to not only be a key component of Jeffrey Epstein's criminal enterprise, but also somebody who took part in the abuse. They don't care. Point blank, period. The requests seek literally every piece of financial information about Miss Maxwell for a two-year period to organizations in which, which Miss Maxwell may be involved, such as the Terra Mar Project, or any other not-for-profit entities with which Maxwell is associated, including, but not limited to, funding received from the Clinton Global Initiative, the Clinton Foundation, a.k.a. William J. Clinton Foundation, a.k.a. the Bill Hillary and Chelsea Clinton Foundation, and the Clinton Foundation Climate Change Initiative, reads that filing. Oh, I'm sure that these donations were all in the up and up. Did, I wonder if Ghislaine petitioned for the uh, donation while she was at the, the, the lettuce wrap spot with Bill Clinton as his private guest. I wonder if that's where they finalized the deal. Did they give the old handshake on it? Boy, can you imagine if we had a legacy media that gave a damn in this country? Can you imagine if the legacy media would pursue this with the, the, the zest and the vigor that they should? Can you imagine what would be uncovered? And not only Bill Clinton, people like Ehud Barak as well. These are big time players on the political scene. So I have to ask myself, why are they not having their spot blown up the same exact way somebody like Prince Andrew is? And for Bill Clinton, I think that the writing is on the wall. I think now that this election is over, that Trump has been uh, uh, been uh, uh, bumped out and Biden has taken office and they don't have to really worry about the political fallout per se during an election season, I would think that the legacy media might be a little more interested in Bill Clinton's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, and especially these financial ties. Because there's no denying them, right? This shit happened. These donations were made. This money changed hands. You can't spin that. Bill Clinton's team can't spin that. They can't try and run their propaganda narratives on it. Facts. Receipts. So, where there's smoke, there is usually fire. And if a, a, a true forensic accountant type of investigation took place into these transactions, I am, I am almost positive that some very interesting things would be brought to light. Even more crucial than funding was the credibility that the Clintons lent to the organization when in 2013 they partnered with Maxwell, announcing the news in a press release at the time. In 2013, the Terra Mar Project committed to launch the Sustainable Oceans Alliance to mobilize the international community and the public at large on the importance of the oceans and the seas and to ensure that the 193 UN member states recognize and incorporate oceans in the Sustainable Development, development Goals to be adopted in 2015. Well, isn't that nice? The Clintons lent their credibility and used themselves as a vehicle for Ghislaine Maxwell to have more pull here in the, the world of philanthropy, in the world of being an advocate for climate change and the oceans. 
What a weird ass situation. And it makes you really wonder, what else were the Clintons involved with, with the Maxwells and with Jeffrey Epstein? Oh, Bobby, it was just the wedding. Oh, Bobby, it was just, you know, they went to Prince Andrews. Oh, but too many coincidences, in my opinion. For this to just be a relationship where they sort of knew each other. I mean, let's remember, Alexander de Rossi, Ghislaine Maxwell's nephew, was hired by Hillary Clinton's State Department. That just happened? Or do you think Ghislaine might have made a phone call? You think Ghislaine might have asked for a favor? I'm pretty sure that stuff like that doesn't just happen in a vacuum. That is a job that is... There's a lot of desire for a position like that for people in the intelligence community, people who have degrees in Near East policy, and there is a lot of competition. So out of all the people that could have been given that job, all of the people that could have applied for that job or did apply for that job, the only one that was qualified was Ghislaine Maxwell's nephew, huh? All right, okay. Maxwell launched the Terra Mar Project in 2012, two years after attending the wedding of Chelsea Clinton. She attended the wedding as the guest of Ted Waite, her boyfriend at the time, and the founder of Gateway Computers. Maxwell was also close with Bill, and even closer to his longtime advisor, Doug Band, because of her time with Jeffrey Epstein. Now, we know that Doug, ba- Doug Band has left the reservation when it comes to the Clintons, and he went on the record talking about Bill and Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell and all of that stuff. So, Doug Band is a very interesting character here, and I'd like to hear more from him in regards to the Jeffrey Epstein-Bill Clinton relationship. I think that would be a fascinating conversation to have. And Ted Waite, who was Ghislaine's boyfriend at the time, is just another one of these so-called members of elite society who has his fingers in some garbage, probably, right? But as far as the Epstein stuff, besides his uh, ties to Ghislaine Maxwell, there's really nothing there, right? But they want to use it like Ted Waite was the the reason why Maxwell was there. But I have my, my uh, suspicions that it might have been the other way around, even. It might have been uh, Ted Waite as the plus one and Ghislaine Maxwell as the real guest. Who knows, though, right? I guess that's all semantics. Survivors had already accused Maxwell of recruiting and then pimping them out to Epstein long before she launched the foundation. In 2008, a Priscilla Doe described in a lawsuit how Maxwell groomed her to operate as a sex slave who could respond to any of the demands made of her by Epstein. The survivor was only 14 or 15 at this time. She was recruited by Maxwell. So again, these are the sort of allegations that were hanging in the air. These are the sort of things that were being talked about. These were the sort of things in the media, in the news. And you mean to tell me that the ex-president of the United States, with Secret Service access still provided to him and, and guards provided to him, had no idea? They knew they didn't care. They figured they'd just thumb their nose at everybody and that this, that this was something of the past. Epstein done his time. Epstein was arrested already. This isn't ever going to come back to haunt us. Well, guess what? Enjoy the fallout because it's back. The newly unsealed document is from the libel case filed against Maxwell by another survivor, Virginia Roberts. It was Roberts whose testimony and evidence caused various law enforcement agencies to further investigate Epstein and Maxwell. A great deal of that evidence was photos which Maxwell and others have long tried to claim are fake. And we have heard from many experts about those photos over the years. Um, There was a a specialist from, I want to say, New Zealand. I'll have to find his exact name, but he's somebody who is well thought of in the industry. And according to them, as well as the FBI, there's no way that those that picture was faked. So those people that are running that narrative, you know, that's some fantasy shit, in my opinion. Epstein took me on a ferry boat on one of the trips to New York City, and there he took the picture above. 
I was approximately 15 or 16 years old at the time. She wrote of the first of many photos she would later give to the FBI. In that picture, Roberts looks years younger than her age as she smiles for the camera while, I, while on an unchaperoned trip with Epstein and Maxwell over 1,000 miles away from home. I mean, yeah, that doesn't raise any alarm bells or ring any alarm bells that a 15 or 16 or 14 or 15 year old girl is out with Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein a thousand miles away from home. Nah, no alarm bells are ringing there. Just call me Uncle Jeff while you're at it. I mean, all this guy was missing was the van and a sign asking if you could help his puppy. I mean, help him find his puppy. That's how brazen this sick bastard was. And these people act like they have no idea, huh? Yeah, okay. Roberts revealed she was raped by Epstein and assaulted by Maxwell on that same trip. This had already been occurring for some time by then, having started in Palm Beach after Maxwell recruited the teenager at Mar-a-Lago, where she was working at the time. Over the next few weeks, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell trained me to do what they wanted, including sexual activities and the use of sexual toys, stated Roberts in previously unsealed documents. The training was in New York and Florida at Epstein's mansions. It was basically every day and was like going to school. I also had to have sex with Epstein many times, many times, she noted. Roberts said that she was trained to be everything a man wanted me to be. The photos that were used by Roberts made it clear that she was with Epstein and Maxwell in Paris, Cannes, London, New Mexico, and the Virgin Islands. So, again, the Clintons have a lot to answer for, folks. A lot of explaining to do. And I think that it would be a good idea for the legacy media to start asking those questions and going down that road. Is there not enough evidence? Is there not enough there there for them yet? How many times does Clinton have to be proven to be lying about his relationship with Epstein and the extent of it and how deep the ties go? I hope that moving forward in 2021 that Bill Clinton is treated in the same manner that Prince Andrew is being treated. Because folks... It's about time that Bill Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, Hillary Clinton, and the rest of them had a meeting with the karma train called Justice. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links for this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back later on, and we will pick up where we left off. Call 1-888-FARMERS to switch, and you could save an average of $470 on your auto insurance. That's a lot of money in just a few minutes. With savings like that, you could be lounging on an impractical amount of ornate and overpriced throw pillows you bought for your couch. But you won't, because you're better with money than that. That's why you're calling us in the first place. Call 1-888-FARMERS to get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data, July to December 2020. Underwritten by Farmers, Trucker, Fire Insurance, Exchanges, or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. Shop Howard's 75th anniversary sale for the best deals on appliances, TVs, and mattresses. Buy an LG Front Load Laundry Pair for $13.44.99. Choose from a Maytag or Whirlpool Washer for $609.99. Get a four-piece Frigidaire Kitchen Package for $24.99.99. Free accessories with a Nectar Mattress Purchase. Up to 24 months, no interest financing. Plus, save up to $2,000 on qualifying appliance packages. Free next day delivery plus a 60-day price match guarantee. Save even more by shopping our outlet location now through March 31st.